I'm here with Lauren Van Mullen, or as some of her audience and clients know her by Truer Words by Lauren. Dot com, her website. And so we're going to talk about copywriting today, writing your homepage, your about page, your services page. And uh, Lauren is known as an ethical copywriter. But first, let me say hi to you, Lauren. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm super happy to be here. Yeah. So let me read your bio so that people have a background of who you are. And then we'll get into talking about how do we write our homepage or the principles of ethical copywriting for you know, homepage, about page, et cetera. So, okay. So Lauren Van Molum has been writing sales copy for online businesses to, since 2008 and has helped hundreds of entrepreneurs and coaches to connect with right fit clients who love their work. Her philosophy is that connection with clarity leads naturally to sales and to enjoyable businesses. She teaches and practices ethical copywriting that's non-manipulative and values-driven. And again, the website is truerwordsbylauren.com. I'll, of course, have the links in the notes below. So there's a lot we're going to talk about, Lauren. And um, so let's make the best use of our time. I want to start with um, just the overall question of what do you consider ethical copywriting versus what we might have seen out there on what copywriting is. So first of all, actually, can you define in your words, what is copywriting? <laughs> let's, let's start there. Uh, you know, we're not like some people, you know, this page has been copywritten in 2018 or 2021 or whatever. We're not talking about copyright, it's not legal, legal rights. We're no. <laughs> talking about something different. So what is copywriting? And then secondly, what is ethical copywriting in your opinion? Well, that's, that's really good because there are two competing definitions. So traditional copywriting is words written on your website in ads that are intended to drive an action. That is like literally the words are there to do one thing. It is to make the other person do what you want them to do. Ethical copywriting is related. <laughs> it's a cousin, uh, but it's intent is slightly different. It's not to make anybody do anything. It is really to bring the people who need you together with the service that solves their problem. So it's, it's really kind of bringing people together who need to know each other, the, the people who have the solutions and the people who have the problems versus let's create this wonderful trap to catch the fishes that we wanna catch and uh, you know make them bite on the bait it, it's I me. love that I love that that you're you're kind of giving these two these two pictures in our mind like one is kind of more matchmaking right um it's more like uh, yeah just like you said um someone who has a problem should know about a solution that has been made for somebody like them why why wouldn't that like that's how the world moves forward that's how people uh, heal and grow and um, and then the other way which is traditional copywriting just like you said it's great you put out a net or you you try to catch the fish and make them bite and and it, this is a uh, you know sort of like we are the masterminds and then the customer or the client is kind of like we're manipulating them to do stuff which is traditional marketing conventional copywriting is that has that kind of feel has that spirit whereas the ethical copywriting i love that you're saying no let's let's find something that really aligns and when something i always say when 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 we have alignment between our product and what the person in front of us wants we just have to whisper we don't yes. have to shout. We don't have to make them do something. They want to do it because we have something for them. That's perfect for them. So what is your, um, okay. Do you want to say anything else about ethical copywriting or should we jump into examples of home page, about page and things like that? And it's always fun to do a little bit of the comparison of this is how it usually works versus this is how, you know, the, the ethical copy difference but it really comes down to, you know, avoiding manipulative tactics and 
actively not trying to cause anxiety or FOMO. And it, it's really because most things are trying to cause anxiety, trying to cause fear of missing out because- That's what FOMO means action. for those who haven't you know, uh, heard of it. FOMO, fear of missing out, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. and those are usually the triggers that um, get people to act faster. So anytime we can maybe slow down the sale instead of speeding it up, uh, anytime we can be transparent about our prices, our process, when we can set up realistic expectations and meet them, all of that is ethical copy. Now, <laughs> I was going to say, hold on, slow down the sale instead of speeding it up. I, 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 <laughs> you'll, you'll never hear another marketing person uh, say that, you know, right? But let's talk about this a little bit. Um, uh, so. What is the benefit? Maybe we'll, I'll start there. What's what would be the benefit of so-called slowing down the sale rather than speeding it up? But because I, I want to say it's it's not it's often not a good idea to try to speed up the sale. Yes, yeah, it, speeding up the sale. Typically, you are you're trying to trip the sort of primal part of the brain that is in charge of fear, that is in charge of sort of like fight, flight, freeze response, and you're trying to trigger that to create the action that you want people to take. Like, if you don't do this now, you're going to, you're going to lose out. And it's like, oh no, limited resources. I am a human. I'm going to die without these resources. And that is the reaction. But the problem when you're doing that is they're not able to process whether this is the right fit service for them. So you end up getting a lot of wrong fit people who have paid you money and are annoyed that they're not getting the outcomes that they thought they were going to get. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that you. I love how you explain these things and do it and do it so concisely because uh, you've described in a, you know basically the experience that I had in the beginning of my business twelve years ago when I was learning from conventional marketers um, to get people to buy as soon as possible, as many people as possible, and I, I was I. I I essentially burned out and kind of like had this spiritual <laughs> personal breakdown and breakthrough a couple of years into my business because yes, I was being successful in selling things, but I was not feeling the fulfillment of actually seeing um, the kind of transformation that I was hoping to see in my business, within my clients. And, and, and just like you said, it, when you sell fast and hard, and sell hard, you get people that are not the right fit. And I, ironically, it seems like you're being successful in the short term, but then it burns you out in the long, in, in the midterm, really. And then you are not able to actually find the fulfillment that allows you to sustain your business and make it more and more sweet and fulfilling over the years, which is what we all want. We don't want to just be in business for you know one or two, three years and then like burn out and then and then have to go get a job. Right? <laughs> we want to, we want to be here. We want to be be serving more deeply, more uh, more comprehensively, more um, yeah. Just anyway, so I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. So this is why ethical copywriting does bring us the right people, and and if we do ethical copywriting well, it brings us enough of the right people. Yes. You know? So um, so let's let's give the audience uh, some real examples, and I know you've pulled up some examples on your, on your screen of people, you know, or some, some of them are your clients or, and also your own website too. And you know, please show, show us examples. Yeah. So uh, what we're doing when, when we're not using those other tactics to try to speed up the sale, to try to create anxiety, what we're really doing is creating an environment where your perfect fit clients are going to recognize that they are your perfect fit clients and look at you and go, I like you. I want to get to know you better. It's that first impression where, where you meet somebody you really click with. That's what we're trying to do. And I, I call it connection driven copy is, you know, it's making those connections. So there are certain places on your website where you want to do specific things to create that reaction. So I'm going to share, we're going to look at some uh, home about services and sales pages. I just have, you know, one or two examples each. And I'm going to go through them. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Yeah. And thank you for, for, yeah, go ahead. So on the homepage, the way you start that 
that connection and get that, oh, you are the one for me, I, I think maybe probably, it, it's sort of that getting them to the questioning, maybe you are the one I've been looking for. And that's really the homepage's job. So the thing that you have to do on the homepage is be very clear. So they feel like they they don't have too many doubts left. What do you do? Are you doing it for me? And what does it help me do? So that is my formula actually, when I start for cheddar copy, it's what do you do? Who do you do it for? What does it help them do? And if you have those three factors in your homepage, it doesn't even need to be all of that in the header. It's kind of hard to pack it all in. Yeah. But if you've got most of it, you've got enough clarity for people to go, oh, that is the thing I've been looking for. Yeah. So with Katie, she is a, a wonderful combination of health coach and garden coach. And mm -hmm. she will make beautiful edible gardens for you. And then if you, if you want to learn more about how to use these things that you're growing to improve your health and quality of life, she's there for that too. And she also does beautiful gardens for people who just want sort of that Martha Stewart backdrop of the beautiful mm -hmm. flowers everywhere. So we had to capture those three very different things. You know, they are three different niches and we had to try to, to bring clarity to her homepage around those three. So what we did is we focused on the biggest one first and it's what are we really trying to do here? What outcome are we trying to help people get? And it's about health, but it's also about happiness. And yes, there are vegetables. Let's be real clear about that. These are <laughs> edible gardens. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the people who are the right fit for like clients for her like like all three and, and like want to see that, you know. Yes. And it always helps if I am the ideal client of my client. And I was in this case. So I had a lot of my own <laughs> empathy to bring here. So here it's, it's very clear. I help people create beautiful culinary gardens and it gives the location because she is location specific. And then it's like, why do you want this? Uh, a, a healthy garden leads to a healthier you. So we're speaking to that outcome. And then it's a, a very clear service directory. What do you want to do? Do you want to create like a delicious garden where you can just grab things and cook? Do you want to have a beautiful garden? Do you want to explore more of the health aspect. Yeah. And I, I like that, uh, you know, I think most of the people who are, who are listening to this, watching this have multiple areas that they like to play in. Uh, and, and it's nice that we we're seeing it on screen here. It's like, there's, there's, you, you can give people options. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's delightful. If you have one niche, I don't have a lot of clients that just have one niche. They, they usually have a couple, you know, maybe it's the same niche at different stages. There's some elements that complicates it and we still have to bring clarity to that. Yeah. So I want to, cause I, <laughs> I want to be respectful of our time. Um, and these, you know, I'm hitting the, everybody with a lot of information. Mm. Uh, do you want to go to the about page? Do you yeah, think? let's let's do that. And, and you know, um, unless there's another home page, you want to show us your home page, or uh, um, just to just to give us a sense of how you're doing it. Um, I I used to break all my rules until I created rules I liked better. <laughs> right, exactly. And you know, right here, it's very clear what you do. Um, and I think, and it's clear who you do it for, four coaches right there. I mean, it's, so it's like, it's, it's a good example. And, um, uh, I like that you are, you're, you're, you are on your homepage, you know, your picture is on your homepage. This is one of the things that I think makes homepages appealing is you could see the person right away, um, you know, and get a sense of their energy and you, you, so much is communicated in one image, style and, you know values and yeah so. that is so important and that's why i i don't recommend using stock photos in your website because those as beautiful as those are and, and maybe they're very aligned with your sense of style and what you like they do not give that sense of your energy the way that a photo taken in your backyard by your significant other who you've bribed <laughs> right. it's not the same yeah yeah, I mean, really, you could have any any friend, family member, uh, neighbor who has a, has a decent eye come over and take pictures, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the pushback I hear from people is, oh, I 
don't want my face all over my website. You know, it's not about me. I'm all about my clients. Um, and I am sympathetic to that. That said, you are not going to open your door if you're expecting guests and have a bag over your head. Yeah, no, it, it's weird. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think I, I, I do also respect people saying, oh, it's not about me, it's about them. And yet they want it, they want to know who you are as soon as possible, as deeply as possible in a short amount of time so that they can make a decision deep enough so they figure, I sense your energy enough that I feel comfortable moving forward. Yes. And Hot I love photos don't do that. I mean, I, I had one um, ask for a Zoom video call back when I wasn't doing video calls um, so his spirit guides could check my aura. You know, people want to see you. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, totally. And here we are on your about page. And tell us what your overall principles for about page yeah, are. Yes, the important thing about the about page, this is really the connection point center. So if we've got clarity on the home page, okay, this is the problem I have. You, you're saying that you solved this specific problem. I think you're for me. Then they want to know if you're going to be a good fit for them on a personal level. So they want to know that you really understand them. Uh, this is what I'm always looking for when I go from somebody's homepage to somebody's about page when I'm thinking of hiring them. Do we have some things in common? And it doesn't have to be a sort of one to one. You know, my clients are not Virgos, hat lovers, gardeners, or tea junkies, you know? <laughs> not necessarily. Some of them are, I'm sure. Some of them are. <laughs> yeah. So you can, you can share your own quirks. The thing sure. that brings you together is that they've got their own interests too. Mm -hmm. and that's where you bond. It's like, oh, you know, you're yeah. into training zebras. I work with camels. It, you know, it doesn't <laughs> have to be the same. I, 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 I think what I'll say about it is like your about page should communicate enough uh, about you or the quirks that are important to you such that your ideal client would say, I would enjoy hanging out with her. I yeah. would enjoy hanging out with that person. Like I could see myself maybe becoming a friend with that person. They don't have to be exactly the, the person, I, obviously, um, but I like the, yeah, I, I kind of like get who they are a little bit more, you know, hopefully by the end of reading this, they kind of, oh, I feel like I get who you are. Yes. And, and that said, you don't want your entire about page to just be, you know, fun facts about you, even though um, <laughs> right. mine kind of is, I put a lot of fun facts. Well, actually er earlier at the top, I mean, uh, b besides this part, you, you go at the first couple of paragraphs below here yes. uh, are about what you do. So I think you have accomplished both the kind of like the, get the feel of who you are and then, okay, by the way, this is what I do. Just That's FYI. That's exactly yeah. the balance that yeah. we need. And yeah. The second part of this, so once you create that sort of warm welcome, this is who I am. Um, and by saying this is who I am, you're also saying it's okay to be who you are too. It gives them permission to show up as their quirky, wonderful selves. That puts people at ease. And then you say, I, what I love to do on the about page is the origin story of your point of view, because this is how you came to do your work in the way that you do it. Yes. It is life experience. It is your knowledge. It is your built-in differentiator that nobody else can copy. Mm, that's really good. Do you have another example for an about page? I can see that there's one open there. Yes. And yeah, there we go. See, get immediately get the feel of the person. So um, this is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Natalie is a wonderful website designer. Yeah. Um, and she has a very unique take on it that her clients um, who tend to be referrals from other people, they tend to come in wanting one thing and she's like, wait a minute, I do that, but there's this also this other thing that I do that's really important. So they come in wanting beautiful websites. And the problem we had to solve for is she doesn't just do beautiful websites. She also does a ton of research. Market she research, amazing. Clients. Yes, that's so helpful. So what we did <laughs> is my approach to website design doesn't start with mood boards or color schemes like every other branding person does. Mm -hmm. It starts with client interviews and it's like, put on the brakes. What did you just say? Yeah, right. Yeah. 
So that's that's cool. So yeah, she's she's going into her point of view right away on this one. And, yes. Uh, yeah. And she says why why that's important, why she came to that way of doing things instead of just doing what every other web designer does, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful website that maybe is not as effective as it could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's and cool. then we end it with fun facts. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Makes a lot of sense. Now let me let me ask you what um. Why wouldn't she have put that point of view stuff on her homepage? That it, could it's, it's, it, well it was an option too, right? You could have done that yes. on the homepage too. Yeah. Although her homepage is uh, communicates other uh, uh, other important things about about what she does, right? So so here it's like before I communicate my controversial point of view that you might not immediately understand, I want to first. What I'm thinking, I, I want to first make sure you know you're in the right place. Right. <laughs> yeah, like this is what this is what the clients want. They want a they want a great website. And if you look, what what gets top billing in her tagline? Gorgeous design. And mm, then the second part is right. informed by customer insights. Right. Yeah. And then why you actually want that combo? Yeah, right. It's it's the bigger why or the deeper why. Yeah, very good, very good. And um and then. Next, let's talk a bit about, um, so hopefully those watching this are like, okay, gosh, there's great principles about the homepage, a couple examples, uh, principles about the about page, a couple examples, and then uh, another common page. So I, I would say first homepage, of course, is where most people uh, get the most traffic for just about every website. The second page that usually gets the second most traffic is the about page. So I'm really glad we, talk, we touched on these two. And then maybe just for a few minutes, touch on another popular page, which is the work with me page or the services page. People are also really, um, uh, many people are kind of confused about and, and nervous about how, to, how do we write that page. Yes, that is, especially when you have multiple niches or you have different segments within your broader niche, the services page is really the signpost. It's the directory that gets people to where they need to go. And there are and so many ways to do it, but I'm going to use myself as an example because I read yes. it out very, very clearly. Mm -hmm. So up here is, is point of view stuff. That's how I start. But then it's sort of choose your own adventure. Mm -hmm. And I, I like lay that. it out very quickly. Right. Like, where are you? You are here. It's like those mall maps. Yes. You are here. You have, you know, if you're at this stage, you've maybe just started your business. You've got, yes. a yes. ready, you've got some clarity. Um, you maybe have been trying to write your own copy and you just hate everything that's happened. You're, we all mm -hmm. go through that stage. And this is the service. If this sounds like you, this is what I built yeah. for yes. you. And I do this mm -hmm. for the three main stages that I work with. So people who come to me, they're either beginning coaching or they are making big changes, like changing their niche, changing their focus, changing their offers. And they need something kind of in the middle. Yeah. So this is my now, mid tier offer. Right. And I, I want to say before you go on there, um, uh, I love that you have named, and this is part of copywriting, is naming, naming things. Um, in this case, naming services or naming packages. And you know the name. Maybe maybe in a minute. <laughs> I'm aware of the time, and but maybe in a minute. What's what's your perspective on naming? How do you come up with names that are that are cool? Like mind meld, or earlier it was copy rocking. I mean, these are unique names. I mean, that's a, not that no one's ever used those words, but you're you're naming thoughtfully. <laughs> they're they're by no means perfect because course, I've course. seen too many entrepreneurs get stuck on the names of things mm, so much that, okay. that everything is delayed. So yes. I, what I try to do is I just, what, what is the heart of what's happening in that se session? So for copy rocking, it's really like me with your draft and I am just taking it from, from one level to several levels beyond that. And it's very much about the copy. It's not really a coming together of minds mm -hmm. the way the mind meld is. That's like, we jump on a call. I get to know your business really well. And then I yeah. go and write the thing. That's, that's cool. Now, let, let me, uh, maybe one final question for you is 
how do you think about, you know, I mean, one of the complaints that I've had about copywriting for a long time, and, and not just me, but I've heard this from other people, is like, oh, if I get someone else to do it, if I get some copywriter to do it, it's not my voice. It doesn't feel like me. And what is your perspective on that? I have a, so I hear that a lot too. A lot of my clients come to me with that. And I come from a background of nearly 10 years of ghostwriting. So, <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> so it was my job yes. to sound like a 40 something British wow. millionaire one day and oh then, goodness. you know, a, a hard dealing travel agent the next day. Wow. I mean, it's very much like acting. Yes. Acting not every words. copywriter can do it. <laughs> right. Right. It's That's much good... safer to write your own stuff. Right. That's a really good one. Wow. Okay. So, um, but of course, one of the things, and we'll end on this one, you, uh, you, you teach people the principles and the steps for writing their own copy in an, in an ethical, authentic way. And I think that's a very powerful solution for that issue of, well, I just don't trust anybody else to write in my voice. Right. Yeah. So tell us about your um, your mastermind that's coming up. And I know some people who are watching this are watching this months later, but anytime, you know, let's not worry so much about the dates, but those who happen to watch it before then, that's great. But uh, just contact Lauren and see what when the next mastermind is. But what is a mastermind? Tell us about this. So this is where I, I take 12 people. I keep it very small. That's awesome. And yeah. Yes, that's important. Um, and I take them through their home about services and sales pages. And it, you know, my, <laughs> my templates are roughly 25 pages long each. So they are comprehensive and not everybody's a reader. So we have um, introductory, like, here's how this template works. Here's what you need to know if you never pick it up again. And then the template is really filled with tons of examples. But what I was hearing from so many of my clients who have been through the big copywriting programs out there, like the big names you've heard of, they kept falling through the cracks. They weren't able to finish their drafts. They didn't mm -hmm. get the kind of feedback they needed. Um, they still weren't super comfortable. It didn't sound like them because they were using somebody else's template. So I created my program in response to those things that I was hearing. My templates are question-based. They guide people to answering these very important questions. Like you have to have these elements, but the way you talk about it, that's yours. I don't give you like all the language. And then the second part of it is it's six weeks long. We spend four weeks on the core pages. Those extra two weeks are if your life blows up because it does <laughs> and to get the writing in to me so I can edit it just as if we were doing a copy rocking session. So copy rocking is built into every page because like my goal, my, my ideal outcome is for all of my clients to succeed, leave with their copy ready to go. Right. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you for providing this uh, service. That's really, really uh great oh i love it teaching yeah. is the yeah. best yes yes yeah for those of us who love to do it it is the best <laughs> well lauren thank you for the work you do and how you do it um any parting words of encouragement or or insight for people on ethical copywriting uh, the hardest yeah the hardest i think the hardest part is a sort of uh, overcoming overcoming your own fears about putting yourself on the page because when you're a personality driven business when people are coming to you for you um you've got to put your your heart out there and that's scary mm, well said thank you thank you for, for what you do thanks everyone uh, so you know the links are below you've seen lauren's website pages of it so uh, if it sounds interesting, definitely reach out and the mastermind, uh, whenever you're watching this, there's probably one starting before long. So contact Lauren about it. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you.